grade 11. So we're going to go through ozone depletion today, or the hole in the ozone layer, as you might have commonly heard about it. Now, please don't confuse this again. Please don't confuse this with the greenhouse effect and with um, climate change and global warming. It's a different problem. It is a problem that we actually already sorted out. Uh, the solution, we ha already have the solution, and we already, already rectified our behavior um, to, to get rid of the problem, but we're going to have to wait a few years for nature to repair itself. Um, so let's take a look. Over here, what you see over here in the blue, in this case, if we take a look at this image, um, the blue is bad. The blue is, says to me that there is very little ozone. The darker the blue was, uh, is, the less ozone there is. And this is the hole in the ozone layer. And it is where it usually is over the Antarctic. Um, and you can see that's where the hole is. The redder we can get, the better. That means that there's more ozone in the red part, but as you can see in this specific picture, there's actually very, there's not red parts. We get up to yellow and maybe a bit of orange down here, but overall there's very little ozone in that area, up to no ozone, and then um, in the green areas we have more ozone, and in that yellow part that's even more ozone, which is good. More ozone is better. Okay, so what are we going to go through? Um, ozone um, is a naturally occurring gas that is found in the layer in the stratosphere um, and about 20 to 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. We live in the troposphere. Stratosphere is just above that. It's the layer of the atmosphere just above the, uh, where we are. The ozone layer is important because it forms a protective screen against ultraviolet radiation, especially UVB or ultraviolet beta radiation, uh, which can cause skin cancer and damage the immune system of humans and other animals. It also reduces crop yields and kills phytoplankton, which affects food chains and also photosynthesis around the world. What mainly caused the thinning of the ozone layer is CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons. And then the solution was that the Montreal Protocol was that was found in 1989 um, pledged the countries around the world pledged to reduce the use of CFCs. And so to stop the thinning and it should be paid by 20 take a look at that. So what is ozone? Okay, so we said ozone is in the stratosphere. This is a part of the earth where we live in the troposphere. And the ozone layer is very low down in the stratosphere. It's naturally occurring and is found in a thin layer in the stratosphere. Um, and then it is actually an O3 molecule. Now, we are familiar with an O2 molecule, but ozone is O3, so it's a type of oxygen molecule. Um, and they form as a result of ultraviolet light. Uh, and ultraviolet light then also breaks it up. Then when it breaks up, it turns into O2. Now, if you've ever been around a photocopier, um, a photocopying machine, and you smell that sweet smell around a photocopying machine when it's photocopying, that's actually ozone. The, the UV radiation of that scanner going across actually um, converts O2 back into O3, into ozone. The ozone layer is important because it forms a protective layer against ultraviolet beta radiation. So how does it do that? Okay, so we get, um, uh, how does ozone form and break? Uh, by a 
high energy ultraviolet radiation breaks an O2 molecule into two separate O molecules, which then connects to uh, another two O2 molecules forming O3 molecules. And that's how we get ozone. So it prevents ultraviolet beta radiation. And so it protects us and also other living things around the world. So what does UV beta radiation, ultraviolet beta radiation cause? Skin cancer, melanomas, eye cataracts, as well as damage to our immune systems. It also reduces crop yields and kills phytoplankton. So it's going to have an effect on other food chains as well as overall photosynthesis around the world. Ozone depletion is a reduction of the amount of ozone in the stratosphere and it's actually the thinning of the ozone layer. And that means that less ultraviolet beta radiation will be absorbed if there's less ozone. Now remember, ozone is a gas. So if we go back to that image over here, ga gas particles move around. So they do move around. And so ozone from this area over here can actually move back into there. And so at this stage, there's actually not a hole in the ozone layer anymore. There's just a very thin layer over here instead of a thick layer like it should be. Let me scroll down to uh, where we stopped with the last slide. Okay, so we, where did we get ozone? Uh, or where did we get CFCs that broke, broke down ozone? So the thinning of the ozone layer is most severe over the Antarctic in spring. And it also occurred um, in the Arctic as well. And um, so the coldest parts of the Earth. Um, mainly that in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, sorry, Antarctic in the Southern Hemisphere. And then uh, it also occurred in the Arctic over the Northern, Northern Hemisphere. Gases that contain chlorine, such as chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs as it's commonly called, cause ozone layers to thin. We used to use it in air conditioners, in refrigerators as a coolant, as well as a propellant in spray cans and aerosol cans. So gases that also contain bromine uh, can call, do the same. And we used to use that in fire extinguishers and pesticides. And so we also try and minimize the use of bromine in, the, um, in anything that is going to go into the atmosphere. Um, we also get natural sources of chlorine and bromine, uh, like, for example, volcanoes, and also some, um, some, resor uh, some bromine and chlorine released by the oceans in biological processes. However, there's a, uh, these are produced in very small amounts in nature, um, and so it's not a contributing factor, really. Okay, so the Montreal Protocol uh, was signed in 1989, and it was aimed at reducing the production of chlorofluorocarbons, and it's been so successful that we stopped the thinning of the ozone layer and it should be covered by 2050. So let's take a look at that and at the results. Remember the blue is bad, the bluer the better, the red is good, uh, the darker the blue the worse it is. And so if we go from 1996 you can see there's a very big hole in the ozone layer but if you compare that to 2012 you can see it's not a darker blue, it's a lighter blue now, and there's a lot more red present. Um, I like this one in 2007. Um, in 2007, you can barely see any blue left there. Okay. So the Montreal Protocol um, then caused us to phase out CFCs, and it's due to better technologies, where we can use alternative chemicals and technologies that allow CFCs to be replaced in aerosols, refrigerators, and in air condition, uh, conditioners. 
Now, why is this important? If we solved this problem, why is it so important? It is extremely important because it shows that we can do this. And we can make, as a human race, a decision for the better of the environment and actually reverse what we have done to this earth. And so we can also then do the same with regards to global warming, the increased greenhouse effect, and climate change. We can make decisions and use current technologies to actually solve our current environmental problems. We've done it before, we can do it again.